Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Mr. Public Advocate. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. I'm here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Present. Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Drum. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lansman. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Here. Levine. Here. Lo uh, Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Borelli. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Jonai. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. Ben Bramer. Jaeger. Here. Torres. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Uh, we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Brenda Starks Ross, the spiritual leader of Trinity Pentecostal House of Prayer, located at 548 Fountain Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. Good afternoon, Speaker Corey Johnson, Majority Leader Lori Combo, Public Advocate Jumani Williams, Council Member Inez Barron, who I affectionately call the Queen of East New York, Mark Levine, and the entire Council. It is an honor, privilege, and pleasure to be at the stated meeting with the City Council. I would like you all to know that I pray for you on a weekly basis. My prayer is that you use the authority given you to govern New York with vision and wisdom. The Bible informs, without vision, people perish. Therefore, I am thanking God today for leaders such as yourselves to continue to use your God-given vision and wisdom to make the hard decisions that will improve the lives of New Yorkers. I appreciate the dedication, devotion of service, and stamina you bring to the decision-making table on a consistent basis. Father, I thank you for these fearless leaders. Permit them to use vision, wisdom, and collective decision-making 
every time they are tasked with coming up with solutions for your people. Let them remember Proverbs 13.10, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Let them continue to advise one another and do what they have, to, what they have done consistently to protect your people. Matthew 25.40 says, Verily I say unto you, in such as ye have done it unto one of the least these of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. God bless you, and may his mighty hand keep you in his perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, I'd like to call on Councilman Barron to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Brenda Starks Ross succeeds her, pa her father as a past senior pastor at Trinity Pentecostal House of Prayer in East New York, Brooklyn. And just as East New York, like the phoenix, is rising from the ashes, Pastor Ross is a symbol of that rebirth. She's a mother, nurse, group facilitator, and administrator. At Trinity, Pastor Ross is the leadership for the youth and women's group, they conduct health fairs, unity in the community marches, educational workshops on HIV and AIDS in the church as well as in the surrounding community and more. Currently, Pastor Ross serves as the Deputy Executive Director and COO of Alliance for Positive Change, a community-based organization that transforms lives of New Yorkers living with HIV, AIDS, and other chronic illnesses. Additionally, she is the staff liaison to the Alliance Community Advisory Council. In the mid-1990s, Pastor Ross worked in the medical surgical unit at Methodist Hospital, Brooklyn, with AIDS patients, and for several years she did that, but then later moved on to work as an administrator. Finally, while employed as coordinating manager at Gouverneur Diagnostic and Treatment Center in the early 1990s, Pastor Ross became the founder and facilitator of Troop PAP, a 28-year-old support group for individuals and families infected with AIDS and HIV. The group is one of New York City's oldest, with five of its original members still in attendance today. And with that, I move to spread the invocation in full on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, we'll now call on Councilman Mizell for the adoption of the minutes. I move to adopt the minutes of December 19th, 2019. Thank you. We have messages and papers from the paper. I'm sorry, messages and papers from the mayor. Uh, uh, Mr. Public Advocate, I believe it was the minutes of December 19th and January 8th of 2020 oh. as well, both minutes. Yes, you're correct. My, my bad. I amend my, uh, my motion. Sorry. So amend. Okay. You're forgiven, Alan Mesa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me, M210 through M215, various budget documents. Screw the bean. A finance. M216, preliminary mayor's management report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M217 and M218, conflicts of interest board appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications. M219, submitting an annual report pursuant to Rule 2.75B. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M220, Council Member Rafael L. Espinal, Jr., resignation. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Land use call-ups. M222 through M223. Coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. We're just voting on the land use call-ups. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Gibson, Jonai, Aye. Gordonchik, Aye. Holden, Aye. Kalos, Aye. King, Aye. Ku, 
Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Yes. Miller. Yes. Moya. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Sanitation. CJ. CJ. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Torres. Aye. Powers. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Abstain on land use 604 and 605, and I on the rest. I on all except for land use 604 and 605. Van Bramer. I on all. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. We'll now have communication. Oh, sorry. Today's land news call ups are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. We will now have communications from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. It's nice to see you here in the chambers. Uh, good afternoon, very happy Tuesday. I wanna thank everyone for being here for today's stated meeting. I wanna begin this stated by talking about the tragedy our city dealt with this weekend in the Bronx when two officers were shot. Officer Paul Strofolino and Lieutenant Jose Guthro were targeted because of the uniform they wear and the job they do protecting New Yorkers. Thankfully, both Officer Strofolino and Lieutenant Gautreau are recovering. But make no mistake, as has been said by others, this was an assassination attempt, and it is only by the grace of God and by these officers being smart and alert on the job that they survived. The work that our brave women and men of the NYPD do each day to protect the greatest city in the world cannot be underestimated or overstated. We are forever grateful for their service, and I want us to stand and give Officer Strofolino and Lieutenant Goudreau a round of applause for their service to New York City and us wishing them well in their recovery. We are praying for them, and I think it's also important to say that we condemn any acts of inciting violence against police officers here in New York City. Anyone who stands up or defaces doors or walks up to police officers and screams in their face and calls them epithets, they are dividing our city. They are not helping our city. And it is important for us to say that explicitly that you can be someone that may want to push for further reforms, but you can also be someone who can say it is unacceptable to divide New Yorkers by using irresponsible and dangerous rhetoric, and we should not be doing that. As we do at every state, I want to remember the lives of those that we lost to 9-11 related illnesses. Two members of the FDNY, firefighter Richard Jones, 63 years old, and Lieutenant Paul Deo Jr., 74 years old. They both passed away from 9-11 related illnesses 
on February 7th. Our condolences are with their families, with the FDNY, which has lost so many members related to 9-11 related illnesses. If we could all stand and let us pause for a moment of silence for Firefighter Jones and Lieutenant Dale Jr. Thank you. Uh, February marks Black History Month. This month is an opportunity to honor and celebrate the achievements that black people have made in this country and in our city. I've been seeing all of Council Majority Leader Cumbo's posts every single day with wonderful folks that we should be recognizing that don't always get the recognition that they deserve. And I know a lot of the members here have similar than highlighting wonderful black New Yorkers that have made an incredible difference in our country and in our city. It's also a solemn reminder of inequality that our nation still struggles with and the council is proud to work every day to tackle those inequalities that we see and to make New York a national model for equity. We have a long way to go, but this council is committed to engaging in the fight for equality in everything that we do. This month is also American Heart Month. I want to encourage everyone to take as many preventative measures as possible to avoid heart disease, such as having your blood pressure and cholesterol checked regularly. Heart disease is a killer for both men and women. So we all should be taking the precautions that we need to protect ourselves. Uh, now let's dive into today's legislative agenda. On today's stated agenda, the council will vote on the following land use items. First, there's 147-40 15th Avenue rezoning in Council Member Paul Vallone's district. There is an Astoria 22-60 46th Street rezoning in Council Member Costa Constantinides' district. And there's a site selection of a new 476 seat primary school at 6902 Queens Boulevard in Council Member Bob Holden's district. Lastly, we affirm the designation of five landmark buildings in Council Member Brad Lander and Steve Levin's district. These buildings were prioritized for designation as part of the Gowanus Neighborhood Planning Study. And out of the Finance Committee, the Council will vote on the following items. Introduction 113A, sponsored by Council Member Brad Lander, would require the creation and implementation of a public online capital projects database to track the progress of capital projects citywide. This database would be the first time that the city tracks capital projects across agencies in one system in a public manner. It will provide critical information and data regarding these projects to the administration and to the public and will hopefully lead to improved capital project delivery. I want to thank from the Finance Division, Rebecca Chasen, Nathan Toth, and Stephanie Ruiz. We will also vote on two Article 11 property tax exemptions. The first is at 528 East 11th Street in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district. And the second is uh, the Carroll Gardens portfolio in Councilmember Brad Lander's district. Moving on, the council will vote on the following piece of legislation. Earlier this year, the council released a plan to combat food insecurity in our city. We are the greatest city in the world, yet more than one million residents are considered food insecure. It's unacceptable, and today the council will be voting on a package of legislation designed to expand New Yorkers' access to healthy, affordable food. First, the council will be voting on two resolutions by Council Member Farrah Lewis. Resolution number 1025 would call on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to opt into the SNAP restaurant meals program to allow disabled, elderly, and homeless SNAP recipients to use their benefits on hot meals and other prepared foods at participating grocery stores, delis, and restaurants. This would make New York State the largest municipality to participate in this program. Next, Resolution 1024A calls on the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance to expand eligibility for SNAP to public college students. Federal law prevents most able-bodied students who enrolled in college at least half time from being eligible for SNAP unless they work 20 hours a week. States can expand the regulations by exempting students in certain college and training programs from the work requirement. College students are not immune from food insecurity, and students should never have to choose between a Metro card, taking care of their financial obligations, 
or their next meal. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Crystal Pond and Natalie Omari, and I want to congratulate you, Councilmember Lewis, on these really important resolutions that we're voting on today. Next is proposed introduction number 1650A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams. It will require the Human Resource Administration to provide information about the Health Bucks program and farmers markets in New York City to all individuals who receive or apply to receive SNAP benefits. Next, proposed introduction number 1659A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, would require the Department of Social Services working in collaboration with the Department of Aging to develop a plan to identify and enroll seniors who are eligible for but not currently enrolled to receive SNAP benefits. And I want to thank Aminta Kilowan from the staff for her work on those two bills. Next is proposed introduction number 1664A, sponsored by Councilor Vanessa Gibson, which will require the Mayor's Office of Food Policy to formulate a 10-year food policy plan for the city. Currently, there is no comprehensive citywide food policy plan with a formal community engagement strategy or consistent and meaningful tools to measure their impact of city agencies' efforts to address food issues. The office would be required to develop this comprehensive plan within 180 days following the bill's package. The office would also be required to report on the 10-year plan to the mayor and the speaker every two years after its release. For far too long, food insecurity has not been a priority in our city. This bill will require that is at the forefront of our planning. The time to act on this issue is now, and I'm proud to have worked on Councilor Ben Kalos on the following bill. Proposed introduction number 1666A, sponsored by Councilmember Kalos, uh, requires the Office of Food Policy to be codified uh, in the Mayor's Office of Food Policy within the City Charter and to delegate specific responsibilities to the office. Currently, the office exists pursuant to a mayoral mandate and coordinates food policy initiatives and reports along with the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and other agencies. To date, the office has not yet been codified into law or given a legislative mandate. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Andrea Vasquez, uh, Alex Polinoff, Nadia Johnson, and Emily Forgione. Finally, we have a bill aimed at deterring reckless drivers. These are vehicles that rack up red light and speeding tickets. They are a small but dangerous group that put the safety of New Yorkers at risk every single day. We can't continue to watch the number of pedestrians and cyclists being killed by vehicles going up without taking bold action to hold reckless drivers accountable. This bill is bold and it is necessary action that we must take. Proposed introduction number 971A, sponsored by Councilor Bradlander, would, would create a dangerous vehicle abatement program that requires owners of vehicles with five red light camera violations or 15 speed camera violations within 12 months to take a safe vehicle operation course offered by the Department of Transportation. Failure to complete the course may result in their vehicle being impounded by the sheriff. Beginning this fall, drivers who receive a red light or speed camera ticket will be notified that those violations will count towards dangerous vehicle abatement program. Uh, after receiving notice that a vehicle is covered under the program, an owner will have the opportunity to contest in order to avoid seizure of their vehicle. Council Berlander has worked tirelessly on this bill, and I'm really grateful to his leadership and his efforts. I want to thank Danny Harris from Transportation Alternatives and the, and the team at Families for Safe Streets, Fabiola Mendieta, Rachel Jones, and Catherine Lepp, and of course, my good friend Amy Cohen. Uh, she is amazing, and we are just so grateful for her leadership. Leadership. Uh, Brad, you've worked so hard on this. You've uh, been working on this every single week, and I'm really grateful that you saw this over the finish line. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Elliot Lynn, Rick Arbello, and Alex Washington. Two more uh, quick things. I want to congratulate our colleague, uh, Council Member Andy Cohen, for his appointment as the chair of the uh, Committee on Consumer Affairs and Licensing. He is uh, a great council member and really grateful for his elevation to this spot. And I want to remind folks that uh, Council Member Debbie Rose has been recuperating, and I hope you all are keeping her in uh, your thoughts and prayers to check in on her, make sure she's doing okay. I've been talking to her every single day, but it would be nice if she heard uh, from members here. And then lastly, I'm happy to, uh, because I know that uh, Councilmember Lander has more than two minutes of what he wants to say to yield some time now if he would like to talk about the reckless driver. Uh, now it's called 
the dangerous vehicle abatement program uh, before we move into general orders. So, uh, Mr. Public Advocate, I want to yield some time to Councilmember Lander. Yield away, Councilmember Lander. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, Corey, we always say thanks to the Speaker, but on this one, it really is true that your steadfast leadership was essential to getting this done. This was a challenging one and, and would not have happened otherwise. Um, two years ago, next month, on March 5th, 2018, a reckless driver with a history of red light and speed camera violations flew through the intersection right down from my district office and killed four year old Abigail Blumenstein and one year old Josh Liu. And, uh, hit Abigail's mom and she lost the baby that she was pregnant with at the time and that really broke the hearts of our neighborhood and of course we've had way too many broken hearts since in the two years since then over 400 people have been killed in traffic crashes on the streets of our city some of their family members are here today up in the balcony and I just want to start as we always do by recognizing the extraordinary courage of Families for Safe Streets who somehow find a way to turn shattering grief into advocacy to save the lives of other people's children and loved ones. And let's just say a big thank you to them for what they brought to our city. We've done a lot together to make the streets of our city safer. In this council, we reduced the speed limit. We've made sure that a lot of roads and intersections have been redesigned. We've expanded education and expanded enforcement. But that crash called our attention to one thing that we have not yet done enough of, which is to focus on the harm caused by the most reckless drivers. It seems obvious that the very most reckless drivers would be the ones who are most likely to injure and kill their neighbors, but we haven't before had a program that held those folks accountable, and there hasn't been one like it around the country. So when we learned about the camera violation history of the vehicle that killed Abigail and Joshua, we pledged to take action to target those most reckless vehicles and to intervene with their owners or drivers before they injure or kill more of our loved ones. It's taken a lot of hard work on the part of so many people here. Uh, it was originally the Reckless Driving Accountability Act, but now we call it the Dangerous Vehicle Abatement Program, or DVAC. Um, it really was a big partnership with the administration to work through the legal issues and the operational issues. Um, and the program that we're establishing with DOT and the sheriff will create a groundbreaking new program that targets the owners of the most reckless vehicles that speed through red light cameras or speed school zone cameras. Uh, vehicles with five or more red light violations or 15 or more speed camera violations over a 12-month period. We estimate that that will be about the 5,000 most reckless vehicles each year. Uh, as the speaker mentioned, those owners or the drivers who operated the vehicles so recklessly will have the opportunity to take a driver accountability program modeled on one at the Reddit Community Justice Center by the Center for Court Innovation, which has been shown to reduce recidivism in reckless driving by about 40% through small classes and real work to get people to connect the dots that they are missing between the reckless driving that they are doing and the risk to injure or kill their neighbors. But if those vehicle owners do not take or have the responsible driver take the driver accountability course, then the vehicle will be a subject to impoundment by the New York City Sheriff because you cannot continue to operate your car like a weapon aimed at your neighbors. This legislation takes an innovative, data-driven, and restorative justice approach that will hold people accountable, reduce dangerous driving, and we believe save lives. It would not have happened without an extraordinary partnership. All the folks from Families for Safe Streets, Transportation Alternatives, Danny Harris and Mark O'Connor, Streets Pack, Eric McClure, Steve Vaccaro and Blythe Austin, Aaron Naperstek, Brian Howell and Will Farrell, who did a lot of the data work that helped us figure this out, and the folks at the Center for Court Innovation, um, again, I really want to thank the speaker for his steadfast leadership here, without which we would not have gotten it across the line, and his partnership on this issue in general. Thanks to Chair Rodriguez. Um, on the central staff, there was a lot of work here. So Kelly Taylor, Elliot Lynn, James DiGiovanni, Jeff Baker, thank you all. Um, on my staff, Julia Ehrman, um, my former policy director, Annie Levers, and Naomi Dan. Um, this was a partnership with the law department and DOT and the sheriff and city hall. Uh, and I am optimistic that they will be setting this program up with real fidelity to what we need. 
I know some people want this law to go further and cover a larger number of reckless vehicles, and I do too. So the bill includes a rigorous evaluation of how well the program works to change reckless driving behavior, reduce crashes, and save lives so that the council can adjust, extend, and hopefully expand the program at the end of the three-year pilot phase. We have a long way to go to that vision zero where no one is killed in preventable traffic crashes and when we don't lose any more loved ones. But today, we're keeping the promise that we made to the families of Abigail and Joshua and everyone who has lost a loved one to reckless driving. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Brad. I yield it back to you, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. And we're now in uh, general orders, and we'll call first Council Member Rodriguez. Is Council Member Rodriguez here? He's waving his time. Oh. Oh, Council Member Menchaca. Uh, thank you, Public Advocate. I want to speak on intro 971. You just heard uh, Council Member Brad Lander and the Speaker speak uh, about and remind ourselves that we do have a duty and responsibility to the families who have lost loved ones to reckless vehicle drivers. Councilmember Brad Lander, with advocates by his side and all of us, we led the way to fight to hold these reckless drivers accountable and like so many fights with this administration, they have had to force, we'd had to force them to confront the issue. However, while the bill is a step in the right direction, it is a compromised bill. And as someone whose district has endured some of the worst reckless driving in the city and has bur buried too many cyclists and pedestrians, one of them my friend, I worry we are compromising our power while lives are on the line. And I'm not alone in this feeling and that we didn't go far enough. And I voted no in the, on the bill in the Transportation Committee yesterday. We spoke to advocates and they told me that the mayor said that why, about why we needed to water it down. There are not enough resources or capacity to process the 20,000 reckless drivers. An RFP would take too long, that we need more data to show the restorative approach works, et cetera, et cetera. The mayor's logic forced us to create a pilot program with an end date. Instead of codifying it into law, the city's judgment that reckless drivers must be held accountable, we are leaving it up to a future mayor and a future council to decide the issue again. Why are we settling when it is so clear that the threat of reckless driving is a perpetual and unaddressed threat? Because I respect and honor the will of the people and especially the advocates who've been working so hard on this, I'm voting yes on the floor today. Colleagues, we cannot forget our power as a council. The mayor's job is not to set the law or policy, it is to enforce and execute the will of the people as embodied by this legislative council. And my community has endured too much already, and I do not want to settle for less. It is in their name today that I ask for more. And my community is holding us accountable to keep pushing, and I will join with you to the very end. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Kalos, followed by Councilmember Coleman. Thank you to Speaker Corey Johnson for his groundbreaking Growing Food Equity in New York City report of last year and for passing this first of this food package today. I also want to thank Councilmember Brand Lander, who tilled the soil carrying this legislation before me and giving it to me to care for as this bill grows into a law. In one of the wealthiest cities in America, even the world, there's no reason why anyone should go hungry. Hunger is not a question of resources, uh, especially when we pay farmers not to grow food. It is a problem of information and distribution. This fiscal year, 10 city agencies will be spending $328 million on food. The Department of Education will offer free breakfast, lunch, snack, and supper for more than a million public school students. The Department for the Aging will offer free and low-cost breakfast, lunch, and dinners at senior centers across our city council districts, as well as on Meals and Wheels. The Department for Homeless Services will serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner to more than 60,000 homeless families, children, and individuals not to mention the Department of Corrections, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and the Human Resources Administration. The Mayor's Office of Food Policy, which recently remained vacant and could have just as easily been dissolved, will be added to the Charter with the power to convene all of these agencies to use the purchasing power of one-third of a billion dollars to buy local, improve access to healthy, 
food and to end hunger. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cohen, followed by Council Member Chin. Uh, thank you, Public Advocate. Uh, in addition to all the great bills uh, we're gonna vote on today, I just wanna encourage my colleagues to vote for Preconsidered Reso 1235, uh, which will do, among other things, uh, make me the chair of the Consumer Affairs Committee, uh, a prospect of which I'm very excited about. So I really want to thank the speaker. I abstain on that uh, <laughs> pre-considered resolution. <laughs> well, I'm going to thank you anyway. I'm going to thank all of my colleagues uh, for the confidence and support. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you, Councilmember, and congratulations, uh, Councilmember Chin. Thank you, Public Advocate. You know, social isolation is one of the biggest determinants of health risks in older New Yorkers. And not every senior <coughs> is able to visit a senior center to access vital services. We can't talk about food justice without talking about older New Yorkers. As chair of the Committee on Aging, I fought to secure an additional permanent $50 million in funding for senior center meals. And today, I'm proud to pass Intro 1659A, legislation that would require the city to create an outreach plan to enroll these seniors in SNAP and make sure they are not neglected. I thank Speaker Johnson, our chair of the General Welfare Committee, Steve Levin, and all of the council staff for their support for this bill and for their commitment to securing food justice for the most vulnerable New Yorkers. I urge my colleague to vote in support. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Gibson. Thank you, Public Advocate, and good afternoon, colleagues. I want to quickly speak on my bill before um, the Council today, Intro 1664A, uh, which would establish a 10-year food policy under the Mayor's Office of Food Policy, and really recognize that in this day and age, we can do a lot more to address food uh, insecurity across our city of New York. Uh, this bill would require the Mayor's Office of Food Policy in consultation with relevant city agencies, community-based organizations, community leaders, food justice advocates and stakeholders, and many others to truly formulate a comprehensive 10-year food policy. The goal of this plan would essentially be to reduce hunger in our city, improve nutrition, increase access to healthier food options, reduce food waste, develop and improve food and farm economies, and increase urban agriculture and sustainability. And it has been recognized, and this city council has pushed to work with the Department of Ed on universal breakfast and universal lunch, and making sure that our families, and especially our children, are going to school with a nutritious meal. But still we find that there are far too many families that are going to bed hungry at night, and far too many that wake up hungry in the morning. It is unacceptable in this city. And this really is a game changer. Many do not know the Mayor's Office of Food Policy was established by an executive order years ago. And this is our effort to not only beef up the office, but to really ensure that they're doing work providing this comprehensive food policy plan that we fundamentally believe is going to make a difference and really an impact in the city. Um, I'm proud that working with all of our colleagues, Councilmember Ben Kalos, who has the bill that will codify the Mayor's Office of Food Policy, Councilmember Margaret Chin, Councilmember Adrian Adams, who have bills that are relative to SNAP and providing more access for seniors, and Councilmember Farrah Lewis that has a resolution on this as well. I look forward to working with all of my colleagues and urge you to vote aye on intro 1664. Thank you, Public Advocate. Thank you, Council Member. And just before we move on, I wanted to add my words of support to uh, Intro 971A uh, and congratulate again uh, Council Member Lander and the Speaker for the work they did on that. Uh, it's been made quite publicly in the papers, my indiscretions uh, with uh, speed cameras, and actually rightfully so, since none of us are above the law. Uh, after becoming defensive when uh, Council Member Lander brought it up to me, I actually took the course and I found it very impactful, and I know the people who took it with me uh, found it impactful as well. So it was a good course, and I'm congratulating that this uh, council is doing something. I know, uh, based on the numbers, thankfully I would not have had to take it with this current bill, uh, but I know it is a great start, and as we move forward, we'll capture more and more people to keep our streets safe. Uh, lastly, I did wanna, and there's a lot of folks in the, uh, in the gallery, in the, uh, 
upstairs who are, have dedicated their lives after lo losing loved ones. I just wanted to lift up Fabiola ben Menendieta, uh, who just finished an internship in my office. She's been through a lot, including losing her son, and it's amazing that her and everyone else, uh, the way they turned their pain into purpose and got this body and this government moving. So congratulations to you and everyone who's there. Thank you. We'll now move on to a report of special committees. None. Report of standing committee. Report of the Committee on Economic Development intros 1664A and 1666A, Office of Food Policy. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance intro 113A, Capital Projects Database. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 611 and Reso 1242 and Preconsidered LU 612 and Reso 1243, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare intro 1650A, Health Bucks Program. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1659A, SNAP Benefits. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 597 and Reso 1244 through LU 601 and Reso 1248, Landmark Designation. Coupled in general orders. LU 603 and Reso 1249, Zoning Amendment. Coupled in general orders. LU 604 and 605, Zoning Amendment. Uh, approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Preconsidered LU 613 and Reso 125, Primary School. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Reso 1235, Committee Changes. Uh, amendment to strike Andy Cohen as chair. No, um, uh, uh, <laughs> coupled on general orders. M206 and Reso 1251, approving the appointment of Alosi Heredia Jarmashuk. Coupled on general orders. Commission. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 971A, Dangerous Vehicle Abatement Program. Amended and coupled in general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 604 and Reso 1252 and LU 605 and Reso 1253, 46th Street rezoning. Coupled in general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled in general orders at this time, I'm asking for roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Ulrich. I ask for a unanimous consent to vote on uh, all land use items as well as the matters on the general order calendar. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of 971A. I vote no. Thank you. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Commission Granite. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate, and welcome back to the chambers. Good to see you today. Uh, unfortunately, our current food system is broken. Every day, people struggle to pay for food to feed themselves and their families. We need to increase access to healthy, nutritious food for New Yorkers with easy and affordable ways for residents to meet fruit and vegetable requirements. Previous efforts to increase food access have not created the comprehensive systemic change needed to dismantle the deepening racial and economic inequities experienced in too many communities across the city of New York. Drastically, our food system continues to exacerbate existing gaps in access and continues to alienate historically marginalized communities. New efforts to increase, to increase food equity are needed that cross multiple sectors as unhealthy food is a problem that falls disproportionately on poor and low income people, creating the false narrative that they will only eat fast food, they love fast food. This is exponentially false. The number of vegetarians, vegans, and otherwise healthy food consumers represented by complying food options in communities of color are staggering. A healthy diet can be transformative. My bill, intro 1650, mandates that the requirement of HRA to inform SNAP recipients about the Health Bucks program, its benefits and enhancement of healthy eating, and the obligation of farmers markets to accept these recipients. I'd like to say thank you to the speaker and all of my colleagues who worked so hard on this legislation package that will benefit hundreds of New Yorkers and their families. Congratulations to all of my colleagues passing such important legislation today. And congratulations to Aloisi Adaria Jemashuk on her appointment to the TLC Commission. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote no on 971A and aye on all the rest. Thank you. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. 
Matteo. I like to vote uh, yes on all land use call ups, and I vote no on 971 and I and the rest. Chin. I and all. Adams. I and all. Cohen. I. Constantinidis. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. First of all, I would like to dedicate my vote to the loved one uh, that already we lost members of the family for Safe Street, relative. You are the one that lead our fight. We can never understand the emptiness that you have in your heart when you have seen the loved one you know, losing their life. So, uh, thank you, Council Member Lander and Speaker Johnson and the rest of the Cali for voting on this important bill. We need to educate the 1.4 million New Yorkers who own cars in the city of New York. There's 7.2 million New Yorkers that rely on buses, ferry, bicycle. They walk our street. They're safe. And even the 1.4 million New Yorkers who own vehicles, they also walk the street. They have mothers, they have children. So everyone had to do their part to do the reckless drivers out of the street. Second, I'd like to congratulate Aloise Heredia for, uh, with the vote today, hopefully to be the new TLC commissioner. A lot of work has to be done. Drivers are fed up, they're tired. They don't, cannot wait for another study. They cannot wait for another task force. They need action. And I hope that with the new TLC commissioner working together at City Hall and the council, we should be able to put the money on the table to build bailout, to create financial support, to increase enforcement. And that we require for someone, uh, a leader like her, to take the lead in this fight, as I also I hope that the Liberty Task Force and the corporate black car bill that we already have a hearing at the council will be passed so that we also are able to bring the stakeholder for those industry and put recommendations to save them too. With that, I vote aye. Carnegie. I vote aye. Deutsch. Uh-huh. Yeah. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I want to request the unanimous consent to vote on all the land use call-up and all the items in uh, today's agenda. Commission granted. Uh, with this, I vote aye and all. Gibson. Permission to explain? Commission granted. Thank you. I first want to congratulate Councilmember Cohen as our new Chair of Consumer Affairs and Licensing. I also want to congratulate our nominee for the TLC Commission, Alosi Heredia Jarmashuk. Um, I'm excited about her coming in to lead the TLC for such a time as this. I believe her experience working in the Deputy Mayor's Office and the Department of Education and really coming to this with a very unique perspective is going to be transformative for TLC. So I look forward to working with her in her new role and her team. And finally, I want to thank Councilmember Lander on two bills today that are on the agenda, the public online capital tracker system for all of our capital projects, whether you're in participatory budgeting or not, less than $25 million, which is a majority of our projects, we will finally have an opportunity for our constituents to track these capital projects online. Many of us are asked at community board meetings what's going on, the cost, the time frame, and through this capital tracker, we're going to now have access. So I want to thank Councilmember Lander for working on this, his relentless efforts, as well as his work on the dangerous vehicle abatement program and all of the work he's done to make sure that this is a balanced approach to go after reckless drivers and create safer streets for all, pedestrians, bicyclists, New Yorkers, and everyone. Um, certainly thanking transportation alternatives and families for safe streets and all of our advocates who have been completely 
dedicated to this cause in making sure that we not only enact legislation, but we also attach resources behind that. Um, I dedicate my vote on this bill today to my dear friend who I grew up with, Nelson Palacios, who was killed by a reckless driver on January 9th, 2017. Um, walking to pick up his son from daycare center, he never made it, and I dedicate my vote in his honor and all of those that we've lost to reckless drivers. With that, I vote aye on all land use call-ups and all items on today's agenda. Thank you. Joe Nye. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Uh, with congratulations to my colleagues who are passing food uh, bills today to continue the fight on hunger in New York City and to Brad Lander on the Capital Tracker Bill, which is very important. I vote aye on all except intro 971A. Hold in. Of commissioners to explain. Commissioner Granite. Uh, I was proud to uh, get a 476 uh, seat uh, K to five school halfway through the ULR process. School District 24 is at over capacity and most of the seats are desperately needed. I want to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson and his staff, Jason Goldman, Raju Mann, John Douglas, and my staff for working to secure the school. However, I am seriously disappointed with the ULR process in general. Developers too often get their way, and in this case, uh, the application seriously was changed um, by Madison Realty Capital. Um, after agreeing to the deal that would lower the unit count and the size of the building, increase parking, and create one uh, more, uh, more one and two bedroom uh, units, Madison Realty Capital broke it by adding a minor mod. Now the minor mod increased the size of the unit. Um, and that, I don't call it a minor mod. Um, it added 74 units. So instead of, as of right, they were allowed 289, they got almost 500. So that, that's ridiculous. Um, we, we went through ULERP, we negotiated for a year, and a minor mod adds 74 units to this development. So I'm frustrated uh, with the process. I think we, as a council, should look at this. If they're going to do a minor mod, we should define that a little bit more clearer. Um, I'm happy to get to school, but I'm very frustrated with adding bulk to the, uh, pro to the uh, um, complex because it's out of character with the surrounding area, right behind we have one and two family homes. So I just, I'm very frustrated with that, but with that I, I vote aye on all. Kalos. Uh, just one moment, I just wanna uh, reiterate that I similarly share the concerns, and we've seen this many times. We saw it on two bridges in Councilmember Chin's district where they said there was a minor mod. We're seeing it in Councilmember Holden's district where they're saying it's a minor mod. It's not a minor mod in these projects and it's disrespectful to the city council and all the work and negotiations that individual council members put into these projects. And we are as a body are gonna be more strict about going after TCP from deviating when they say they have a deal with individual council members. So oh, Councilmember Holden, I'm glad you spoke up on this today. Councilmember Kalos. Aye on all. King. Congratulations to everyone today. I vote aye on all. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. No, it's okay. Permission granted. Thank you. First, I want to congratulate Council Members Lewis, Gibson, Kalos, and Chin, and the Speaker as well, on the food sure. equity. Yeah, it's really right. easy if you live in a neighborhood yeah, like mine to yeah, ignore yeah. food in inequities yeah. and all of the challenges yeah, that right, folks right, are right, facing, right. and I'm really glad this Council is pushing forward. I want to congratulate Council Member Cohen on the Consumer Affairs Chair. I want to thank the Public Advocate for your words about uh, taking the course and your openness to being honest with New Yorkers about you know how we how we change things, which is really powerful. Uh, and then I want to speak very briefly on Intro 113, the Capital Projects Tracker Bill. Every member of this council has a story about a capital project that went anguishingly long, that cost more money than you expected, that got lost track of. Um, we know that with our city facing the challenges of climate resiliency, of aging infrastructure, of growth and schools, we need a capital projects management process that is better. There have been some project progress made for sure, but there is still not just a simple place where you can go online and see comprehensively all of the capital projects underway in the city, whether they're on time or behind, whether they're on budget or behind. 
and compare bathroom costs across agencies or a contractor who's worked for one agency or another. Um, I want to thank Chair Gibson, who's may, whose committee has helped make space to, to make this move forward and really shine a spotlight on what needs to change. Um, the bill we're passing today will uh, is an agreement with the administration to move forward to establish that capital projects tracker, creates a task force with an advisory board that the council is represented on. It's going to be hard work, but even in the interim, the administration has agreed to start putting a lot more data online through the capital da projects data report in the city's financial management system. So we're getting a lot more data already. Lots of thanks here to Corey, to Chair Drum, to Vanessa, to uh, Rebecca Chasen especially, and, and Nathan Toth and Stephanie Ruiz, to Steph Zilkowski uh, on my team. Thank you all for making this happen. When it's on online, council members and our constituents will be able to make sure that we're really getting our money's worth and our projects done on time and our neighborhoods ready. Thank you very much. I vote aye on all. Levin. Uh, Commissioner, explain my vote. Um, Commissioner Manning. Thank you. Uh, I just want to congratulate my colleagues on the legislation that they're passing today. Council Member Adams, Council Member Lewis, um, uh, Council Member Chin, Council Member Gibson, Council Member Kalos. Um, I know, I know, uh, Councilmember Kalos was working on this bill for how, how long, Ben? Seven years. Um, and uh, uh, so, congratulations to you all, um, and to Council Member Lander, um, who has dedicated a tremendous amount of time and uh, and thought to. Um, to making sure that we have accountability on our streets and that people that are uh, licensed to drive a 2,000 pound vehicle uh, that can uh, take somebody's life in an instant um, are required to use discretion with that vehicle and not break the law with total impunity. Um, and um, I wanna thank the members of the Families for Safe Streets uh, and transportation alternatives, particularly uh, members of the Families for Safe Streets, for, uh, for, for persevering um, in the face of unimaginable, um, unimaginable grief and, um, and transform that grief into, um, in, into meaningful impact um, in the memory of their loved ones. Um, in order to save other people's loved ones. And I think that that's a, uh, a very worthy thing to do. So with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Vote aye on all. Lewis. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, public advocate. I also want to say congratulations to newly, chair, newly minted Chair Cohen uh, for Consumer Affairs and Councilmember Yeager, who's also on the committee. There's some beautiful legislation on its way. Councilmember Chin and I um, are pushing together that is um, important for street vendors across the city. So looking forward to talking to you about that. Also an extra shout out to Councilmember Lander on the capital budget tracker. Uh, I, I basically allocate about four out of the five million dollars to capital projects for participatory budgeting every year. So we are looking for some answers. And finally, I want to dedicate my vote today to Fabiola Mendieta. Uh, she lost her son in 2006, Brian, and she's someone who is part of this incredible movement of families who are seeking safer streets. But not only that, she was by the side of a mother this last week when an ICE officer shot uh, her son, a Mexican tourist, and we were there at the hospital. Hour by hour, she was there by the side of a mother who was angry and confused and wanted answers, and it was Fabiola who was there to console. This is a kind of movement that is holding the hands of people who have lost so much, who are demanding that government do the best that they can. And so last night, in a call with Antonio Reynoso and I, we told her how much we were fighting for more. And then she said, well, you better. And I will never forget that. We will not stop fighting. Thank you so much, and I vote aye on all. Miller. Aye on all, with the exception of 971, A, and I'll be abstaining.
Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Aye on all, and congratulations to Councilman Lander for a very, very important bill that will save lives. Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Commissioner Granite. Thank you. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Councilmember Brad Lander for the great work on the Capital Projects Bill and also um, the Reckless Driver Act. Um, I do want to say we, I want to be very mindful of the fact that the administration and Mayor de Blasio and his obstructionist nature of negotiating these bills, this is what we come to after the advocacy put forth by the Speaker and Councilmember Brad Lander. And to be very careful about people taking victory laps um, on the work that is being done by this council. Uh, and I do think that we could have possibly done better if we had a more willing partner in the mayor's office um, or in the mayor's administration. So I just want to make sure that we account for that. Also, when I hear concerns over modifications of land use items and so forth, it speaks to the need for comprehensive planning. That is what it speaks to. We've, um, We've given away a lot of our authority in the city council on land use items because we don't have the infrastructure built in-house to work on land use uh, because DCP does that work. If we want to get serious about being the sole body that handles land use um, in a meaningful way, we have to think about the value of DCP and whether or not that type of work should be done in-house in the city council so that we can assert our mandated right to land use in this city. That is what we need to do. It should no longer be under DCP. And then I want to thank uh, all the other folks that have passed legislation related to food. Um, really appreciate it, and uh, I vote aye on all. Richards. Aye on all. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Commissioner Granite. Thank you. I just wanted to say congratulations to my colleagues on, on the bills around food and of course around safer streets and to thank my colleagues for their support. I have an Article 11 tax exemption for 528 East 11th Street which provides affordable home ownership for another 40 years in my district. Thank you so much and with that I vote aye on all. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I vote aye on all and um, just want to congratulate my colleagues for all their bills and, you know, thank uh, the families for safer streets, thank the families for safe streets for their tireless advocacy. Um, you know, you're moving the ball forward every day and there's real outcome from your efforts. Uh, it must be so painful to have to do this every day, and, but you're really making a difference. So I want to thank you for that. I said it at the beginning. I don't know. Torres. Um, permission to explain, but I just want to congratulate my colleague, Councilmember Brad Lander, on an extraordinary package. It's a win for good government and a win for public safety. So a quite impressive package to do in one stated meeting. And I just want to congratulate uh, one of my favorite colleagues, Andy Cohen, on his appointment as the chair of consumer affairs and business licensing. He's, he's just an extraordinary public servant and you could have made a better choice, Mr. Speaker. I vote aye. Traeger. Aye. Valone. Aye on all with the exception of LU 604-605, which I abstain, and no on 971A. Now we know. Okay. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. Aye on all. Combo. I vote aye. <laughs> Speaker Johnson. I just want to make sure that we got Councilmember Yeager's vote correct. I'm joking. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to uh, give a little dissertation on it if you'd like. Uh, uh, aye on all. <laughs> I vote aye on all, thanks. Congratulations to all uh, my colleagues who are passing bills today and all items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in affirmative, zero in a negative, and zero abstentions. With the exceptions of LUs 604 and 605 with accompanying resos, which is adopted by a vote of 46 in affirmative, zero in a negative, and one abstention, 
and intro 971A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, five in the negative, and one abstention. The revised land use call-ups, uh, 47 in the affirmative, and zero in the negative. We now have introduction and reading of the bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We'll now move into the discussion of uh, resolutions. All right, we have nobody signed up. Um, now, now I'll read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on either of today's resolutions should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. Resolution 1024A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance, OTDA, to expand eligibility for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, to public college students. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Resolution 1025. Resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the Governor to sign legislation to opt into the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP Restaurant Meals Program to allow disabled elderly and homeless SNAP recipients to use their benefits on hot meals and other prepared foods at participating grocery stores, delis, and restaurants. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Any abstention? Congratulations, Councilman no, Lewis. Have it. Congratulations. Congratulations, Councilmember Lewis. And we'll now move into general discussion. We have two on Councilmember Kalos and Councilmember Majority Leader Combo. Councilmember Carlos Kalos. As summer break approaches, tens of thousands of low income public school students and their families are relying on summer youth programs to keep them safe, fed, and positively engaged. However, $20 million in funding for summer youth programs serving at least 34,000 middle school students was excluded entirely or in part from the preliminary budget in fiscal years 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, with funding restored each time by the city council and the executive budget uh, whether through the leadership of Youth Services Chair Rose or Youth Services Chair Eugene before her. I'm proud today to co-introduce legislation uh, with Youth Services Chair Debbie Rose to eliminate the proposed budget cuts and mandate universal youth programs. Our children need us to take care of them, whether after school or during summer break. It doesn't matter. These children need access to healthy food, enrichment, and positive engagement. This universal youth programs legislation will finally put an end to the budget dance and put our city on a path to guarantee every child a place to enjoy their summer. I ask you all today to join Debbie Rose and me as co-sponsors on introduction 1886. And I want to thank uh, Council Member uh, Farrah Lewis for already signing on. That was very, very quick. Thank you. Council Member Rodriguez. Yes, I, I would like to take this opportunity to invite all my colleagues to uh, be part of the co-naming that we're doing on uh, on Sunday the 23rd, uh, 101st and Amsterdam Avenue, and we're co-naming as Calle 27 de Febrero in honor of the Dominican Independence Day. So as you should know from the 8.6 million New Yorkers in the city of New York, one million New Yorkers are Dominican descent. Most of them are U.S. citizens. They are all over the place, different from the 1960s when there was only 12,000 Dominicans in the United States. So that day, the Sunday the 23rd, we call them in a corner after the Dominican Independence Day. Everyone is invited. The second thing that I would like to share is that today we have a great meeting, a great breakfast led by the Immigration Coalition, supporting the municipal voting rights. It is so great to see the public advocate being one of the supporters Borough President Eric Adams, Borough President Gerd Brewer, City Controller Scott Stringer, Reverend Sharpton, NWRCP, and close to 30 council members that already believe that the same thing that is happening in Colombia and South America, that if you go to Medellin and Cali, and if you are a resident there, you have the right to elect your mayor. 
you have the right to elect your leaders. So for those that have any concern about shouldn't the right to vote only be given to anyone who is a citizen, yes, for those who vote in national election. But for those who vote in the municipal election, we should address not a section without representation. So I encourage all my colleagues to please join the bill that we are trying to move, establish the rights of New Yorkers with green card and working permit to vote in municipal election. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I think that this body should be proud from food and security uh, to uh, dealing with the capital budget and dealing with safe streets. Very good day for the council. And I'd like to pass it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's meeting. Mr. Public Advocate, we're happy to have you here. Uh, thanks for being here. The State of Meeting at February 11th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. <laughs>